They say it's the strangest case that's ever happened in the history of hypnosis. You can't call it channeling, you can't call it hypnosis because it is so different. It was actually going back through time and contacting Nostradamus while he was alive, living in the 15th century, 1500s in France. But it happened totally by accident. About 10 years ago in 1986, when I was working with a woman, we just wanted to go into a past life to see if she had a past life. There was no problem, she didn't want any therapy. But during the course of the regression, some very strange things began to happen. We didn't set out to contact Nostradamus. I don't think you could have. It was something that was totally unpredicted and, and simultaneous and spontaneous. But during the course of the session, she went back to a lifetime where she was a student of Nostradamus in France. And that's when everything got very strange because as this male student, she was talking about Nostradamus and suddenly she said, he wants to speak to you. And I was totally you know, shocked because anyone who does this kind of therapy knows that does not happen in, in this kind of therapy. And uh, she said, he has a message for you. He had been looking for a link to the future because he could see that the prophecies where he had written were not being correctly interpreted. And the time was coming when they were going to come true. When he says he has an assignment for you, he wants you to get the book that has the prophecies in them, in French and English, and he wanted me to read them to him. And he would tell me what they meant and explain all of the code that has been lost for 400 years. But we successfully translated all of the known prophecies, all almost 1,000 of them, and I had the unenviable job of putting them in order, in a chronological order of some kind. It took a computer to do it. But the translations were coming so fast at the height of our work that as fast as I could read them to him, he was giving it back. We were doing 30 translations in an hour. It's absolutely impossible for the human mind to do that. It cannot think that fast. But he was telling me what all the, the symbols were, the anagrams, and he broke the code. Then I had to use a computer to put it together. So it ended up with three books because it took many twists and turns along the way. But there's another part to this that makes it even stranger. Is he, he was most emphatic. He said, you must understand you are not speaking to the dead. I'm not a spirit floating around out here somewhere. And he wanted me to be very sure that I emphasized that. He said, you are speaking to me while I am alive, living in France, writing the prophecies. And in breaking the code, a lot of it had to do with ancient Greek philosophy, Greek history, and Greek legends. Because he said this way he could fool the Inquisition by thinking he was commenting on history. And actually he was foretelling an event. But uh, when I didn't quite understand what he meant, he kept saying, I'm appalled at your lack of education because we don't have to learn those things in our time period. But he would tell me where to go in the libraries to find them. And if I did not do the research exactly, he would have this very stern uh, temper. But it was as though you were a, um, with a very stern schoolmaster, I think would be the way you would, would classify it. As though you were a student with someone who had all this knowledge and trying to learn from them because he was living during the time when the church was very powerful and to do anything like this, he would have been condemned to death or he said he would have taken his land away and thrown him into prison. So he had all these visions and what is he gonna do with them? He, at first he was writing them down in a kind of a diary, but he knew that if he died, they would be found and they would be burnt. So how was he supposed to protect the, the prophecies to get them to our time period for which they were intended. The only way was to devise this code. And anagrams were very popular during in France during that time period. So he was using something he was familiar with. And he made these anagrams and puzzles. And there were, uh, that's why he was almost a thousand of them. He said there were actually about 1,500, but some of them have not survived to our time. The main reason that he said he was making this contact was because he wanted us to help change the futures. So he believed that mankind could change the future, especially if you knew what that future was. So his job was to tell us, this is what's going to happen if you continue along this path. And he said that man doesn't know the power of his own mind. 
If you knew what was going to happen and focused on the opposite scenario, the opposite effect, that could be our future. We could create that with our minds. But he also said, if the power of one man's mind is that powerful, imagine the power of group mind. That if you get groups of people focusing on the opposite, on peace and harmony for the world, you could truly create miracles because the power of the mind at that point would not only be multiplied, it would be squared. The power would be tremendous. And this is what my message has been as I travel all over the world, is tell people they can change the future. They are not puppets. They do not have to go along with what is predicted. We can have a wonderful future if we just know about it, focus on it, use our minds. We're so scattered, our energy is very scattered. You focus that energy, it can be tremendous. But the problem is that the predictions are coming true. But if we know we can make changes, maybe that sets the point, will we do it?